Let's go. Hey everybody, welcome back to the video. I definitely hit record before you said that. Huh. Um, it's Sunday, December 8th, 2019, and we are the video. <laughs> that's us. That's, that's definitely us. Um, how are you doing, Steve? I'm all right. I, uh, I went out Christmas shopping today. Today, too? Today, too. Hey, when I went shopping on Saturday, I was I was only shopping for Burger Burger and for mini golf. Mm. Not for Christmas gifts. Mm. But today, I went out to buy Christmas lights for my Christmas tree and also some gifts while I was out. And it is a nightmare out there. <laughs> I stood in line at Target for a good 35 minutes. Christmas I got, shopping I got my is PJ like... pants. My Christmas shopping is like mostly done. I I got into the crap and I just did it and got it over with. Oh, I'm envious. I mean, my Christmas shopping is mostly buying my family gift cards, but still, still some to do. Dan, how's Grand Blue? It's good, but I'm not playing it right now. Mm. What are you playing? <clears throat> I was playing nothing. I was looking at some stuff. Mm. Art. Yeah, art. Okay. You know, special art. Mm. That's it. You got anything going on? I mean, you know what I've had going on. I've been. That's sick. true. But what about our listeners? That's true. They I also bet. know what's going on with Dan. <laughs> they also live here. <laughs> Did you get sick and then get better and then get sick again? Yep. The dream. <laughs> I know it was awesome. I think I had a they had a sinus infection that got in my throat. Mm. So it went from a stuffed nose to I can't talk. It was great in a matter of one day. Sounds great. Yeah, it was awesome. A lot of people didn't show up to our friend, other friend Steve's birthday because a lot of people were saying they were sick. But he might just be not cool. I don't know. Yeah, it might just be that he's not cool. Yeah, that's probably it. Um, speaking of cool, hi, Nick. Hey. You're the cool guy. Oh, that feels good. What are you going to do with all that cool power? And try to do good with it. Make people's lives better. How? <laughs> Spread my Christmas room, cheer. Man. Okay. I don't know. How are you doing? I'm doing good. Outside of being cool. It's been good. I have just been been working and trying to play games. Yeah. Not playing enough games. Yeah. That's the video. We all work and we try to play games. Hey, Noah. How are you doing? You know... Pretty good, pretty good. <laughs> now that the day's over, I had like a, I had a super weird day. Tell me about it. It was weird to watch you lean in to like, <laughs> tell me about it. Tell me about it, Noah. Um, about so last night we went to our friend Steve's party. Not not current Steve from the video. Not me. Um, so I don't know. I drank a little bit, smoked a little bit, and then. We came home, I went to bed, got like five and a half hours of sleep, maybe six. Woke up really tired. Uh, Dan drove me to work. It's true, I did. And then I was here. I was in the basement eating a can of pears. Like that's. <laughs> I don't know what happened. It was. Just, he was just sleepwalking. I, guess. I think I was just like in my own head, and all those thoughts that like meant nothing or something. So that's just where they went. The useless thoughts that I got rid of as time went on. So, like, nothing of import actually happened, so I don't have any reference, I guess. Mm. My boss might be in trouble. Oh, no, why? Again? Uh, this is the the real boss. Uh -huh. um, she offered me today as overtime, because I told her, like, hey, I'd like maybe some work before... You know, because I'm about to have a month off. Did I mention that on the last podcast? I don't think you did. Okay. So I work at a school and um, we're about to have winter break off. I think we also have spring break off, but I work summer. So um, I'm about to have a month off of work. And so I was like, hey, if you have any work, let me know. And she said, we all shut down, like, there's going to be, like, no work. And I said, okay, can you give me overtimes? And she said, I have to offer it to other people, and then if they don't take it, you get it. 
I said, yes, awesome, perfect. Um, she offered me the overtime without giving it to the other people, Ooh. which is a bad move. Yeah. Um, especially since the other person uh, that would have had it first before me wanted it from me. And I was like, I think I'm going to take this one. I kind of want some money. Um, so she might be in trouble, she told me. She's like, I don't, I don't care. You're my favorite. I was like, <laughs> perfect. Yeah, but yeah, let's yeah. talk about games. Yeah. Let's do it. What have you been playing? What's Dan been playing first? Wow. I almost se- I almost segued it back in his face. And we got like a month of Dan catching up. That's true. Yeah, you know what most of that month has been? <laughs> Trails sick of Gold Dan. Steel. I've been I was sick. Uh and I took a break from Trails of Gold Steel and played Outer Worlds. Hmm. All the way through. That was a good game. I only failed you know, botched five or six quests. Okay, so who here is going to play Outer Worlds and finish it? And who here has finished Outer Worlds? I am near finishing it, but I have not. Okay. I'm very, clo- I'm very close to not playing it again. I haven't touched it yet, and I probably <laughs> will maybe early next year. Okay. I just wanted to know where we are for spoilers. Mm. Yeah, so made... The, the recap at the end was kind of fun. It kind of like goes over all the stuff you did and the mm-hmm. results of of everything. I like that. Is so did like the a, game for you? Go ahead. I was, is the recap like, uh, this is what happened to these characters? Or is it... Specifically your crew members and then each major decision you make on each planet. It gets a little blurb about how it affects everything. Cool. I forgot what I was going to ask. How mine played out? No, no, no. How so? Like when you were nearing the end, did it all of a sudden just like time for the end? Yep. Okay. I thought it was just me. I no, it was just I mean, me. I could kind of see it coming, but like when I go to Byzantium, and there's no quests except for like one. I'm like I guess I'm almost done. Okay. There's nowhere else to go. For the first time in the entire game, I have completely cleared out my quest log, and I have one main story quest to do in Byzantium. And I got and I got the trophy for doing all companion quests, yeah. so I'm definitely getting close. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, I would have had that a lot sooner, but I put off going to Byzantium for a long time to clean up everything else. So it, uh, I got it as soon as I got to Byzantium and did that final follower quest, hmm. companion quest, whatever. Pretty good. Um, my beginning stat spread did not line up with anything that I was doing, so I definitely did that backwards. I was actually a little bit upset about that. I I wish that that game... Because it lets you respect most of your choices. It lets you respect your perks and your skill mm-hmm. points. But it doesn't let you respect your like high-level character attributes that you choose at the very beginning of the game. Yeah. And... I chose those like not really knowing what the game's options were going to be. Yeah. And so I did the same thing where like I put some some of my points into kind of like physical bulk strength and, and, and strength stuff. and yeah. the way I played is almost always avoiding combat and yep. usually using like dialogue checks and stuff. So yeah. I wish I would... you could reset those even if it was had like a high cost or it's like you can only do this one time. Yeah. I wish you could respect those to line up with your character. Um uh... Like, I wish my perception was higher because I missed out on yes. pretty much every single dialogue option for perception. Towards the, the end of the game, I started seeing a lot of perception checks. Well, I'm, I'm not done yet, but I have yeah. started to see a lot of perception checks that I cannot meet. Yeah. That's what happened to me, too. Yep. I also played that game. <laughs> you, you did. It's just the way that, like, I did quests. I um, killed that person that you said you killed. Mm-hmm. Early, way earlier on, yeah. so I think I missed some quests one way or the other. Mm. You either missed them, or because you went a different route with your options, she approached you sooner. So I was with the board, so I uh, went to that person. I was not. I like. She was my go-to quest giver. Sure. And then at one point, I was like, "That one, that one is too much. I'm not going to do that task." And she's yeah. like, "Well, then you'll die." And then I killed her. Yeah. And then I had to do, like, the good ending. So I'm wondering if, like, 
that maybe skipped some stuff. Oh, I don't it's... know. She didn't talk to me until I was going to like the final stuff. Okay. It was like a side track, like real quick right at the end. Like, hey, you should come talk to me. I'm like, okay. And then I just gave her the middle finger <laughs> and shot her. Did she get to see the video? Yeah. I like the video. That was a good video. Yeah. I can't wait. <laughs> <laughs> what else um, you got? Well, I, uh, I finished Trails of Cold Steel tonight. Same night that I finished Outer Worlds. Um, the ending was not exactly what I was expecting. As uh, some of it was what I was expecting because I'm like I know there's a fourth game so they can't resolve it the way you think the, the way mm-hmm. it kind of wants you to think that it's gonna be resolved like uh, the good guys do good and and whatnot um, they they do not so good and then <coughs> it it cuts off it, like it like black screens you like a thing is happening it boop lights turn off oh and then the credits roll. Like all the heroes are about to get hit by a laser beam and it just goes black or something. Uh, he's being like chokeholded, oh. like by the big bad evil guy, and then he's like, "All right, it's time to settle this," and <laughs> lights go off. Wow, bummer. So, and then the the final image is like some something's all chained up, um, and it gives you like these floating texts of like, "Yeah, things are really bad right now, but you know, there's still some hope." Uh, so take a break for now and come back later to be continued. Uh, it was very good though. What a bitch move! <laughs> like, I mean, you you'll buy the next game, whatever. They they did that with the first one too. Going to the second one, it wasn't quite as drastic, but it was. You're kind of winning, and then more bad guys show up, and you start losing, and then main <laughs> character gets tossed uh, off and gets taken away. And then that's where it cuts off. And then the second game picks up right where it leaves off. So I imagine something similar will happen with this one. When I play it probably next year. I don't know exactly how soon we're going to get that one. I was sitting on the train and you're like, these are the people that died. Yeah. And I was like, please no Freddy. Please no Freddy. Please no no Freddy. Freddy's good. (laughs) Yeah, Freddy's fine. Part of me wanted like that were, whole class he, to die or something. He's a the, no. It wasn't like that. I wanted something like that. Not quite that big. It was only it was only a few characters, but they were very important characters. Not people I was expecting to get knocked off. So that was uh, that was something. <laughs> um, other than those two games, I have not been playing anything. Really. New chapter came out in Fate Grand Order. You've you've heard all about that, as I've told you. Yep. HP Lovecraft weird stuff, witchcraft and all that. Pretty good chapter though. I enjoyed it. Um, the Mega Man collab in Dragalia has been fun. You've been playing that too. A bit. Um. Grand Blue has Gotcha Pin and Muku. Which are just mascots for gotcha games. Oh my god. Little little fuzzy green and red things. And uh, one of them you recruit for your party, and there's another one that's a summon. So you get to use them both. And uh, the story for the event is just them, as if, as if the story played out with them and your crew, and they're really overpowered. <laughs> <laughs> so, it's, it's pretty fun. I was talking to... Uh, I was playing a little bit at Steve's party near the end, and uh, just a moment to myself. That freaking house was so loud. Um, and then somebody was asking me about it. And he's like, oh, yeah, I downloaded it. I don't know what I'm doing, though. I'm like, oh, okay. Well, <laughs> if you want some tips, I guess I can help you out. But uh, he usually doesn't play anything for very long, so I guess I... I don't expect anything to come out of that one. Yeah. <clears throat> but that's fine. It was more shocking that somebody else knew what it was. <laughs> that person is also very handsome. He is. Muscly man. Han, if you know him. 
You probably met him in passing at some point. I would believe you that a muscly man is handsome. Mm-hmm. Shout outs to Han. Yep. Shout I have out. a podcast in which I can do shout outs to people. Shout outs <laughs> to Han. He sounds great. He is great. <laughs> Nick, I assume Dan's done. Yeah, I'm done. I got nothing else. Nick, tell me about the games. The video games? Uh, We'll start with that, yeah. yeah. Well, I haven't been playing like, board games or anything. So. Okay. Um, the only thing I've really played is Pokemon. I've been working my way through Shield. Um... I have three badges. Taking it so real I'm, nice and slow. Oh, I'm going nice and slow. And, uh, I don't know, it's been a fun game so far. I haven't, like, settled on a party. I've just been kind of, like, swapping guys out as I've been, like, leveling and evolving, mm-hmm. which is kind of Until fun. I got to, like, the sixth gym, I didn't have, like, a set team either, so. Yeah, because, and part of it's just, like, I want to try out the new ones. Yeah. See if they're good. Um, I think I'm on like a path of a bunch of ladders and stuff on my way to the fourth gym. Oh yeah, the like so desert. I just, yeah, I just left to, like that big castle town. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Gyms like four through six happen very, pretty fast. Yeah, like bam, bam, bam. boom, boom, boom. Oh. Yeah. I like that I'll get to fight some different gym leaders than all y'all. Mm-hmm. Oh, which is neat. You, yeah, because we both had sword, right? Mm-hmm. I think I get like an ice gym leader. And you get, you get a ice ghost. and ghost. Yeah, you're go, you're going to the ghost gym right now. Okay, I'll be excited to ask you about what like your gym challenges were for those gyms because that'll be like the cool, unique thing is oh, what right. the mm-hmm. like setup is to get yeah. to the leader. I liked the gym challenges; they were mm-hmm. fun. Gotta hurt those woolus. <laughs> yeah. Spoilers. Oh, I did spoilers. Yeah, I one of the guys uh, I work with. He's been kind of like. He, he's been playing um, Death Stranding. Mm-hmm. So he's really been like, what do you think of it? Come on, get farther. But I was just like, sorry. <laughs> I haven't oh, got to play it. Yeah. Um, Death Stranding. Mm-hmm. Death Stranding, yep. But my last two weeks, um, I was um, uh, primary on call for like Black Friday and stuff. Ooh. Technically, I'm still on call. So. But so that was kind of busy. Normally on call, it can be busy, but it's like not too inner, like too involved. But like during the busy days, like Black Friday, Cyber Monday, we were like really actively watching our systems to like make sure things stayed up because we do we do software that does sales tax, so it's like a big deal if those go down. <laughs> yeah, on, on buying days, so that took up uh, quite a bit of my time. And I've been just doing more stuff with like my my uh, home lab hmm. coding and stuff. Good video games, Nick. That's... <laughs> That's all my video. Oh, good games. I did. Uh, uh, Steve was over this last weekend, and we were talking about a game. Is this you throwing it to me? Do you want me to say the name of the game? You can say the name of the game. <laughs> Starcraft 2 Legacy of the Void is that what you're referring to? that's the one yeah I never did uh... so those Starcraft Legacy of the Void has uh, you know your main campaign and then at the end there's like uh, an epilogue several missions where it's not just you playing the 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 race of the game the co-op mission thing? No, yeah. these are like you play. I think, uh, like, a, I'm, is it a Terror and a Protoss and a Zerg? There's three missions, one three per race. Yeah. Mm. And so I was. Uh, is the first one the Protoss one? Yep, because it transitions out of the regular campaign smoothly that way. Yeah. So I had when I beat it like last year, or the year before, I didn't finish all of the epilogues. So Steve was bugging me to play him. That's an ending for StarCraft Two, isn't it? So, I I will say as part of the the games that I've been playing, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna segue to myself here. I played all the way through Legacy of the Void. I finally played StarCraft II: Legacy of the Void. I was, I think, uh, we had a friend over and the TVs were taken, and I was like, sort of in limbo as to what I wanted to play. And I was like, I'll play something on the computer. It was on Black Friday, and nothing was really like in my Steam library was looking good. 
And then I was like, wait a minute, it's Black Friday. And sure enough, I looked and Legacy of the Void was on sale for like $11 or something. So I was like, it's finally time to buy Legacy of the Void. <laughs> it's finally time to finish StarCraft II. And so I played like half of the campaign that night and then half the campaign the next day in just like two enormous chunks, including the epilogue. And I think that Legacy of the Void is like an incredibly good StarCraft II campaign. Like they did excellent. Yep. And then I don't like the ending. Yeah, <laughs> is, I agree. It is like... <laughs> Talk about going out on a whimper. Oh I, know, my God. I know. Well, two things. One, and I, I'm aware that this game is several years old, so I, I'll, I'll try as much as possible to avoid spoiling specifics, but... Nick, have you beaten it? I have seen it yet. <sighs> okay. Dan, have you beaten the it? Missions, but like, like when it came out. Episode. Okay. Well, I will spoil it then. Sorry Spoilers. for anyone Sorry for anyone like me out there that still hasn't beaten Legacy of the Void. I feel like if they haven't at this point, they probably don't Yeah, care. Skip ahead five minutes in the podcast. Don't leave. Keep listening to us, but skip mm-hmm. ahead. So you beat the main campaign in that, and I think that ending is kind of fine. Like, there's this big bad, and you stop the big bad, whatever. And then you do the epilogue, and it's like, <laughs> it does a bunch of weird stuff with the Zelnaga, and then it just, like, ends really unceremoniously. It's like, okay, I guess that was... That was it, and then it has one cutscene at the end, and it's Rainer sitting in, the, like the Joey same, Ray's the same saloon, yeah, from the beginning of the game, and he's like looking all sad, which makes sense based on the context of the ending. Like Kerrigan had just like transcended to being basically a god to stop evil, and then she, in her human form, walks in, and he's like, "Yeah, let's get out of here." And then it says, "Jim Rayner was never heard from again." <laughs> <laughs> and it's like they completely like undid all of the build up to that ending and like the actual interesting meaningful ending of like oh man what happened to Jimmy? Well, he, it would it would be cool like it's not like a profound ending but the idea of oh wow at the end of StarCraft 2 Jim Rayner is sad because Yes, the universe is better off, but he personally had to make a huge sacrifice to get there, and now he's sad, and how does he deal with that? That's interesting. His girlfriend just walking in the door when no story has ever implied that makes no sense. And it's human Kerrigan, meaning that it's not she even got like... unzerged. Yeah, even in the campaign of StarCraft II, they like deserged her to like take her out of the influence of the swarm and the overmind. But she still was Zerg. She still was she, Zerg she Kerrigan. Back. Yeah, she went back. Yeah, she just like gained her free will back. Yeah. But no, this is like like red haired StarCraft one Kerrigan. It's I did not like it. And then it gives like like a couple of this like PowerPoint slide screensavers of like an Artanis went on to be the leader of the Protoss. <laughs> and <laughs> the other guy and Zagara went on to be leader of the swarm. And it's like <laughs> so not a great ending an amazing game though but oh it was so good it's such a blizzard way to do things well and like yeah it's they they I... always terrible but there's like they, they do really great and they just fall on their they just fall flat on their face yeah. with their stories yeah so there's my that's my mini rant about the ending but the takeaway really is that the game is very very good and i'm happy to have finally played through the campaign it felt good to just be playing starcraft again I really like just it threw out the whole series of StarCraft Two, what they did with the campaigns, where they had the like the little extra flavor for each race as you're going through, where you're picking yeah. like different like upgrades and stuff. Yeah, and they're always being like side objectives that help you further those upgrades. It's yeah. cool. I like that whole system. I do hope they do a StarCraft Three someday, but I hope that they mostly have all new characters. Yep. I don't want them to try to retcon any of this. I want I want the ending to be Jimmy Rayner walks into the bar and takes the hero and says, let's get out of here. And then he was never heard from again. <laughs> <laughs> They're just going to some mystery. <laughs> that place. Yeah. Like heroes just keep disappearing. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Jim Rayner left because he's in Heroes of the Storm. <laughs> he went to the next. I That's did. what happened. I mean, yes. There's also the element of the they show you a Zelnaga, and Zelnaga kind of just look like Cthulhu, like big, warbly, tentacly flesh monsters, basically. And then in the story, Kerrigan is gaining the power to become a Zelnaga, 
and she gets to be like beautiful hot red phoenix lady because they don't want to turn her into a big tentacly monster <laughs> they're like well i mean transformed kerrigan needs to be cool looking so we can make a heroes of storm she, skin she still needs to be hot yeah, yeah. this can't this can't not be so anyways i played starcraft 2 it was awesome it was very good i agree i've also been playing a lot lately monster boy in the cursed kingdom which is that an old one or is that one of the newer ones so there was that remake of Wonder Boy and the Dragon's Trap yeah. that came out, and I think you might have watched me play some of that. It had really pretty art. I don't think so. It was like very well done, and it had you could like toggle at any point between the original graphics and like the beautiful hand drawn art. Oh, cool! Um, and then that team went on and made a new game in that style and in that series, like kind of based on the experience. And so it's a, like gorgeous hand drawn art and animation and everything um and it plays just like the old wonder boy or monster boy games if you've played any of those before so they're basically they're basically metroid style games with the main hook being that you have transformations you can turn into like a snake to get through small areas and climb on vines or you have like like clay friends like that was the game the name of the game the super nintendo game clay friends uh it's like Clay Fighter? No. Oh. It was a, you're a little blue ball, and you turn into different animals. Hmm. I don't remember. It's Because it, I always got it mixed up with Clay Fighter 2, and I was trying to think back to what that game was. Hmm. I didn't mean to hijack that, but no, it, made me, uh, it made me think of that game. I. If there's another game like this, I'd be very happy to play it, because it is super, super good. And the music is amazing. looks incredible. And you, Nick, you don't like it? Nick's shaking his head at me. He didn't even see me play it. I was playing it on the Switch. You couldn't see. You were too busy no, watching should... Brooklyn Nine Nine. Oh, Claymates. Claymates. That, okay. that was the name. Maybe. Call him out on it. No, everything he said was true. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right then. Um, yeah, I'm pretty close to finishing up that game. It. Uh, it. it it does the thing sort of like Metroid Prime where you explore all the areas of the game and then before you go to the last area of the game, they're like, okay, now that you have all the powers, you have to go re-explore these certain areas to like find the relics that will get you into the final area. And then it does that again a second time where you then get oh, into geez. the final area and it's like, okay, but now you need to go find all the pieces of the legendary armor hidden all throughout the world. And so I've been doing that. And so my map is like 96% complete or something, so I'm pretty close to finishing it up. And it's not a Castlevania game, so it doesn't have 200% map. Oh. Um, but yeah, that game, like, it is an incredible game. I, I had wanted to play it since it came out, but I put it off for too long. And now, sad that I even took as long as I did, because it is a very high recommendation. Very, very catchy soundtrack, too. So I, I will probably finish that one up soon. Um, I started playing, I'm like six chapters into A Plague Tale Innocence, which is a stealth game. I forget the developer of the, of that game, but, um, it is a stealth game that takes place in like an alternate history version of, um, the bubonic plague. So they like, they spin off of the idea that rats were the, like carriers and biting people gave them the plague that element is still true in the game but the rats themselves are like the actual plague in this game so anywhere that's dark will like get infested by like tons and tons and tons of rats that are just like swarming and so if like someone is caught out in the dark rats will basically like swarm and kill them and eat them and so a lot of the sneaking and a lot of the puzzling is you trying to like navigate through areas without ever leaving a light source and since it's you you control one character but you're also protecting your younger brother in the game so they're like an ai partner that's with you kind of like last of us so it's like how do i get to that area and how does my brother get to that area and like how can we get there together without leaving someone in the dark for any period of time stuff like that you you look sad (laughs) does one of the brothers die i don't know it it's I'm not all the way through the game. Okay. It it is a heavy game though. I'll say it's really good, but like it is 
pretty brutal like it is a depressing game and there's a lot of like violent imagery and stuff in it and so um i haven't played it as much because leah was like this game seems good but like it just it bums me out too much to watch and so i was like (laughs) all right well I'll, i'll play it when you're not around and then i'll just like tell you the story beats so it that might happen i don't know <laughs> we'll see um other like depressing things have happened in similar veins but it is like a really really pretty ps4 game and the lighting is excellent because the whole game's themed around lighting so their lighting engine is really really good so i'll probably finish that one by the end of the year maybe depends on when i can find time the only other game i've been playing is a game called Sparklight, which is like a roguelike on the switch i don't know that i have a ton to say about it i did play all the way through it but you texted me and said you liked it that's like all the information i got so i mean if you're familiar with roguelikes there's like not a lot to say the idea in this one is that it plays sort of like a it reminded me of the controls almost of like cross code it plays sort of like a top-down zelda-ish style game and the world is randomized every time you die it like resets to a new version of the world um and there are like dungeons on the overworld that randomizes and um when you find a dungeon you'll do right away at the beginning of the dungeon it'll give you like the zelda item like the hookshot or whatever it might be and you play through that dungeon with that item and then at the end you're given the schematics to make it for yourself but you don't get to leave with the item and then on the airship that is above the world in between your runs you can pay the currency to develop the items to have them permanently it was fun it was an easy roguelike so if anyone is like interested in the genre but doesn't want a super hard one it's a good place to start um the ending was kind of frustrating i don't think it was very well balanced but yeah it was pretty fun i I ended up beating it in like two sittings just because it was colorful and easy to play and it was my mood so yeah that's I think that's everything I've been up to, but what about Noah? I played 30 seconds of Rogue Legacy while waiting for Joey to get on Apex. I also played a nice. roguelike game. <laughs> How'd it go? I really like Rogue Legacy. I've never it's, played I need to play it. I know. It's, really? it's fun. It's, it, it's, it's, one of, it's one of the games that I feel worst about having never played. I've played it, but I never beat it. It's good. This is my opinion. Um, I'm not going to get deep into it. I played 30 seconds of it. I got to the boss and died, and then Joe was like, you ready? So I was like, yeah. Um, other things I've been playing is, I guess, just the same stuff. Not Wild Arms? Uh, not Wild Arms. Apex Legends. Apex Legends. And That's Apex what I've been Legends. playing. And then Stardew Valley. I actually finished Stardew Valley on my phone. Um, I played it on PC, too, and I beat it there, but beat it on my phone, too. Instead of going the crops route and making money that way, I went, like, the animal route, Mm -hmm. which is easier because you can upgrade your barns and your coop to be deluxe, which means it gets to hold a ton of animals, and it auto-feeds them the hay, and you can build items to auto-harvest from them. So I just show up like once a week or every two weeks and I just grab everything from there and sell it. It's like, here's $70,000. It's like, yeah. I was making like 2000 earlier. Um, but yeah, it's a lot. It's different. I used to use like a sprinkler system to set up my crops anyway so that, to give myself less work. Um, but there's even less work in animals. It just doesn't sell like as fast because you can't. I don't know. You have to grow like 10,000 corn and sell it, so it's a lot of money. Um, But the animals, you either have to hand milk slash shear or um, have the auto grabber. Hmm. It's a lot of fun. I got three out of four candles again. So for anyone who doesn't know about Stardew Valley, it's like Harvest Moon, which is a farming simulating game. It's fun. Uh, At the end of your second year, your dead ga- grandpa, uh, or his spirit, or whatever he's using here, um, shows up and he's like, hey, I like the farm. I'm going to raid it out of four candles by my grave. <laughs> I got three again. I think it's 
I think it's got something to do with like how many friendships I had this time around. It was like, I don't know, because I had a ton of money, had a ton of animals, had a ton of crops. I had fixed a lot of stuff. Maybe I needed to fully upgrade the community center. So the community center is like, there's a bunch of like little mini tasks that you can do in order to like upgrade your town in various ways. So there's like a foraging bundle, which you go into the community center and it's all broken down. There's like different rooms um, and each room corresponds with a bundle. So you go down to the, God, like the play room or something. I forget what it is. And that one's like foraging. So you go out during spring and you forage like a leek and then summer you get a grape or something and then fall you get a mushroom um, and then you bring all those items and there's other bundles in there too but after you after you get all the bundles it actually instantly repairs the room and there's little spirits that do this but that's essentially what it is um, and there's six rooms and I've only had four finished I don't think I've ever finished it mm. um, I usually don't do the fishing stuff because I don't really care for the fishing in that game so I almost never have that but I think I'm going to go for a full completion thing here on my phone it's a lot of fun to play on the train it's really good um, another thing I played on my phone was a little bit of Eve Echoes which is a early access new-ish mobile game I think it might just be Eve. It might just have all of Eve in it. Because, like, I was, you know, pinching and... What's the opposite of pinching? Pulling? Mm, pushing, I guess. You know how you pinch? Is this pushing? Spreading. Spreading, spreading? Yeah. yeah. Spreading. So you pinch your fingers to, like, zoom in and spread your fingers to zoom out. Um and it's like you start it up and you look at your phone and then there's a text box and then there's a box with numbers and then there's all sorts of data over here and then there's a bar here and you're just like I just want to fly in space man I don't need to know all this uh, so you dock or I docked and there's like main story stuff I've I've just been messing around with it seems like it might be complicated like Eve sounds like it but it's early access so I I've been getting like disconnected and crashes and stuff, but I, I thought the concept of Eve on mobile was good, so I was like, I'm just gonna do that. Um, so like, I don't have a, you should play it or you should not play it thing yet. I don't have a verdict. Um, but think about it, I guess, if you're into Eve. I don't know hmm. any of us are. I don't, I don't when we say it, Eve, do we mean is that the Eve same online. as Eve Online? Eve Online. That's yeah. what I was talking about. The big MMO space hmm. thing. The, the money, money one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yep. So, uh, outside of that, I've been playing some of the Contra collection. I don't like the Contra collection, I don't think. No? Uh, in theory. So, it has, I think, ten games. It has one of the Game Boy ones. It has hardcore and then I think Japanese Hardcore. And then it has the arcade original. It has, or the one that I played on NES. There's the arcade version. They have the NES version. And they have the Japanese NES version. Uh, Super C. Oh, God. Some more. But what bugs me is, like, five of the, five of the half of the games are just two games. But just different languages or whatever. When... Uh, the other game I've been playing, Mega Man X4, for the Mega Man X Legacy Collection, you can just switch between Japanese and English, whatever. Like it, they don't, they didn't have like Mega Man X4 and then Mega Man X4 but Japanese. You just switch between the two. There was no like milking of data slots or anything, mm -hmm. trying to like fill out a full roster of Contra games. Um, it's been fun. It's Contra. If whatever. you're gonna play Contra Hardcore pretty sure i'd recommend playing the japanese version because i think the text is a little bit faster no but if you want to speed run it good idea no i think that in the japanese version you can take multiple hits before you die 
and I think in the U.S. version they switched it to one hit and you're dead. Oof. So there was like a people will play through this game too quickly when they rent it. So let's make it way harder in the United States. So you can only take one hit, but I think you can take three in the Japanese version. That's rude. It is. Um, I think that's it for what I've actually been playing. But I bought God of War. Yes. For ten dollars. Yes. I was looking at games, and I forgot. There's something that was more expensive than it, and it was like a joke. (laughs) But it was like $20 for that game, and it was $10 for God of War, and I was like, am I an alternate to mention here? (laughs) Like, what is going on? Was it like FIFA 2019? Maybe. It It was something definitely I thought was bad. Um. But yeah, that's that's what I did. I I played those games. I bought that game. Oh. I also bought Master Chief Collection, but I haven't played it. Master oh. Chef. I'll look forward to hearing about God of War. Mm-hmm. I have no idea when I'm going to pick it up. Yeah, that's it. You want to talk about this cool. decade or? Yeah. So I think that uh, you know, as we wrap up. 2019 and as a result wrap up the <laughs> the teens is it is it the teens is is that the that's the aughts the teens and the 20s okay as we wrap Can't up wait for the 20s oh get hyped for the 20s no as we wrap up the teens we thought that uh since we have a little bit of time left before we'll do our game of the year talk next time that this time we would just sort of look back on the last 10 years and like as you start to look back you realize like 10 years is a long time. Like things were very different for me 10 years ago in gaming specifically than they are now. So that'd be interesting to look back and be like, what were some of the biggest phases you went through? Like what were things that you discovered for the first time? Things that were influential for you? Um, Just sort of taking a step back and looking at the decade overall. And uh, I did pull together a list of all of the system releases in the last decade that's kind of like what i did and i looked through and tried to remember stuff and it's like i that was so long ago did i even know you in 2010 nope nope i didn't know any of you in 2010 i knew everyone but dan maybe okay yeah we weren't even all friends in 2010 Mm -hmm. i mean Nick and I have been friends for 10, I, years, 10 years already. Today I had the realization that I've known you almost half my life now. Yeah. We're working on it. <laughs> We're doing it. I try every day to reach that point. I'm trying so hard. I'm not trying at all, and we're doing about the same. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, I mean, I can definitely run down the list of consoles, but I think if anybody has anything big that they are just itching to talk about right away feel free that's why i asked nick if i knew him in 2010 because i don't know i remember that time we were in like a gamestop or a game store of some sort um and you and pat told me to play this gaia it was a it was a ps2 copy in box and you guys you, you can't play this game and it's like i don't know is this a video game for me and then i played it and it was a video game for me this is, a video, this is a video game for Nick, too. Oh, it's, it's a good video game. But that's like that's a memory that sticks out, but it, that... I don't know. Yeah, w- was that yeah. in the 2010s? Yeah, interesting. It's hard being old, man. It's hard to remember my past. It is. And there's some things for me right before the this last decade that were, like, big. Like, right before the decade started is when I was in, like, a big achievement phase of my life. Like grinding lobbies in dead online games with random strangers to like try to get the 30 point achievement for whatever stupid game i was playing i remember judging you a little bit when you just left mad and running with the like auto career mode on dude <laughs> to get achievements <laughs> when you completed the 30 year franchise it was a 500 point achievement that's, that's unheard of dude i did plenty of shameful things back in those days but i don't have any regrets Everyone has to have their teenage achievement phase, and the achievements are good. They yeah, are in that I need my Chivos. 
Ask Jeeves. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Jeeves. Um, so, th- I mean, one of the biggest things that I remember, and I know that this is true for some of us, is at the beginning of this decade, I was massively into StarCraft II. And, like, not just playing StarCraft II, but it was, like, the first time that I was, like, watching a lot of StarCraft. You're, like, sports, right? Yeah, like, I was, every day I would watch the Day 9 Daily and I'd like always be watch every major tournament that would come on. It was like the first time in this decade I think I got like super absorbed into the culture of a game. Not only that, but you were playing it, right? Like, because that was like yeah. One, I don't know if it was the first game, but it was like you could play the ranked matches and you got placed in certain leagues. Mm-hmm. Yep, and you were always trying to, you know, improve your ladder ranking, get get yourself out of bronze league. <laughs> <laughs> oh you you want a memory yes do you remember the match between me and joe wade when we both started starcraft 2 i don't know if i do it's there was definitely some planetary or like some fortress lifting or whatever <laughs> some base lifting he was tearing he like flew it to the corner and i had to go kill it <laughs> but it was a game that took like 40 minutes and <laughs> neither of us built scvs and stuff it was one of those games Oh, it was it's really good that's like it would be nice to go back to that level of simplicity now when i play starcraft i feel like uh, you know like, too much. like i'm a has-been like i'm trying to be better than i am because i've watched so many good people play and it's like i don't actually have the fundamentals to do what they're doing but yeah it was like there was like a, a year and change if not more where like all the time i was just constantly dealing with starcraft stuff that's a good memory. I remember StarCraft. I look back on it very fondly. I, I don't know. There were a couple other instances, but like there's been a few times in my life where I've gotten really, really into one game or series that's sort of like blanketed over other stuff. Like Rock Band was that too for me. And I I think StarCraft is one of the last times that happened and I don't know. I don't know if like the way that you get older and have more adult responsibilities and like whatever less free time i don't know if it will ever like happen in the same way again i hope it does because it's a good feeling to be really into something well and it really helps too if your your social circle is feeding into it right because like yeah. you were spending time at people's houses when you were hanging out all playing starcraft your own separate laptops with, yep. with day nine or something going on, <laughs> on the tv in the background like it was all starcraft all the time mm, that's very true it, and we weren't always playing against each other sometimes everyone's just laddering on their own or doing whatever but i should go back and watch some old day nine dailies i bet that would be a good time he's changed well day nine. he has to move on move with the times right yeah his game isn't popular anymore and so he i think he did a good job modernizing he he's still interesting to watch but the stuff he has is not particularly for me that and it's a little bit like starcraft was very clearly like a genuine passion for him that he was like so so excited to Mm -hmm. like talk about and be a part of and now he still is excited about games and stuff but these are not like the games that like exist in his core so he just doesn't have as much to say he's about. not making slay the spire daily number 100 yeah, my life like, of slay the spire he's playing outer worlds because it looks interesting and because it is the popular game right now he's not talking about starcraft because like all he's ever wanted in his life is to talk about starcraft so and yeah like what was his what was that like the story the one that would make you cry oh but his 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 biopic yeah i don't even I, I don't even remember it was like my life of starcraft or something yeah and it was like episode. It was one hundred. Yep. Yeah, that's the one I started on. Oh, it's a good one too. It was oh. a long one. I, I gotta go back and watch it at some point. There was that and his his playthrough of Amnesia. <laughs> it's really good. <laughs> if you're gonna watch somebody play Amnesia, it should be Day Nine. Yeah, absolutely. So yeah, that was a big one for me. What's the cutoff? Well, it's the last what? decade. Was it like beginning of 2009 or beginning of 2010? Beginning of 2010. 2010. Okay. If you have one that borders on the, the edge that you're itching to talk about, I'll entertain the, it. The one that really borders 
so the game came out at the end of 2009. Okay. November 3rd or November 11th. That was Modern Warfare 2. Oh, did that come out in 2009? You probably yes. played that so in we, the yeah, 2000s. We must but yeah, that's what I was going to say. Like either way, you're pl- we're playing that well into 2010. Yeah. And that was a big deal. That was another one where like everyone was playing it. It was on my mind all the time. I had never gotten into a shooter that much, like a competitive online one. Like we played Halo land matches. I played a little Halo 2 online, but it was just for fun with friends. And it was like, I, I mean, that was that was true for me too. And it was from a, it was in a time where like that's what everybody was playing. Yeah. Like these days, there are more things to compete for people's attention, so no game bubbles up like that extremely. Other than I guess Fortnite, but that seems like an entirely different thing. But yeah, that's part of the decade. It is. It's not part of my decade, but it's part of no. the decade. No, it's a part of our decade. We made a memory. <laughs> <laughs> I'll I'll say that one for you. <laughs> But yeah, you're right. Everyone was playing it. Like, mm-hmm. um, I was working at a grocery store at the time, and like the other guys in maintenance were way different than I was. They mm-hmm. like talked about their cars and sports and shit. Yeah, but we could bond over Modern Warfare. It was good. Good. <laughs> yeah, I don't think any. That was the last shooter like that. But I don't think any game has ever like captured quite that level of excitement for me since then games have come close but that's a good one i feel like i've told you this but it feels like apex legends because i wasn't around for modern warfare 2 i feel or modern warfare even i like missed that boat and i feel like apex legends is my like my how, how do you say it like not living vicariously through it but yeah, it's it's like your it's version of resurgence. that, right? Like it, it is your Yeah. People have come back to this and are playing it a lot and like I like it and we're into it. Thinking about it all the time, yep. right? It I think the only thing that stops it from being as big as Modern Warfare two was is that you have to do it in squads of three. So like you can't have every single person playing because it's harder to like line up people's schedules and stuff mm-hmm. so you've got your core group that just played all the time that's just another thing too is now we're all older and have jobs and i get home at 10 at night yeah jobs with schedules that don't line up yeah yeah like with modern warfare like um i think a lot of people would hang out in my house at the time um we all had like second shift jobs or third shift <laughs> yep. and so like, I had my 360, and then someone would inevitably be bring theirs with to my house. Or if it were at, like, Steve's house. Mm-hmm. So you'd always have at least two TVs going, just swapping off accounts, playing. It's fun. It was, yeah, it was a good time. <laughs> what else you got? Dan, you got any? What, what do you like uh, from that last decade, bro? Dan, do you remember? <laughs> do I remember all the things that you guys did together? No. Do you remember meeting me in the last decade? I do. Memories. <laughs> Thanks, Tyler. <laughs> Thanks, T. Roy. <laughs> um, let me think. I mean, my wow days were winding down mm-hmm. by the by 2010, um, <clears throat> if not completely done at that point. I had a resurgence of it when Legion came out, um, where it was kind of fun to do that song and dance again for a while yeah um kill the boss like kill the end game bosses when they are current and that kind of stuff it wasn't quite the same as it was back in the in like 2008 and 2000 yeah because cataclysm came out around 2010 and that's about pretty much when i stopped but bc and, and wrath were like my prime time which mm-hmm. was like oh six oh seven oh eight somewhere in that time frame um what else what else have i i'm trying to think it's hard to think about all those big things considering i forgot to think about them all week (laughs) you want to know a fun fact about uh steve the the teens the 2010 to now decade every mmo i've ever played has all been in that time period the first one i ever played was cataclysm Mm -hmm. and then I played like Little Guild Wars two and Little Final Fantasy fourteen and that's it. So this this is the decade of MMOs. Yeah, it really kind of is because like 
I mean, I think before, WoW this, was... before this decade was just WoW. Yeah. Or EverQuest. Um, Dark Age of Camelot was back then, too, I guess. I think there's an old Star Wars one, too. Yeah, Star Wars. Guild uh, Wars? I don't know. I'm just yeah. saying. Two play people play Guild Wars. <clears throat> um, what? That was you and Pat. The old, or not the old I Republic, but uh, yeah, Star Wars Galaxies. Yeah, that's it. Because I remember that because a bunch of the WoW people in my first guild were came from Star Wars Galaxies. Mm-hmm. Like, our guild tag, SGO, was <laughs> Star Wars Galaxies Online or something like that. And... Yeah, that was just a bunch of old farts reminiscing about that Star Wars game and how it got ruined. Oh, well, by, that's, that's by the Jedi <laughs> <laughs> or something like that. I don't, I don't really remember the whole story, but yeah, I mean, I've definitely played a lot of games in the last decade, a lot of really good games. Do you think Ibn Ab was in this decade? Was it it? It was, and I actually was going to not specifically bring it up, but I mean, this weekend is when, or this weekend, (laughs) this decade is when Gamer Weekend started happening, right? Like, I think so, yeah. And it was all thanks to Ibn Ab, a random indie game on the PlayStation Network that no one's ever heard of or no one else has ever played. I'm pretty sure. It's like one of those 50 cent games you just kind of pass up, but. And I don't even know why we we're playing I don't either it was definitely one of those like i think maybe it was, it was a psn game at some point i think it was like PS plus i had seen it so many times that i just finally wanted to play it or something because i don't think ps plus was a thing yet it, it really feels like one of those things where we were so desperate to play a co-op game that we typed like co-op into the search <laughs> bar in the playstation <laughs> network and that one was like the first one to pop up because it's very specifically designed to be played by two people but yeah yeah, all of our gamer weekends have happened all in this decade. Ibn Ab is memories, though. That one, I think. Yeah. Nah, I'm going to cherish that one, throw it in the vault. That's a good one. That was definitely, if there are situations in your life where, like in Persona, your friendships rank up, that was definitely a social link improvement for us. Like, we ranked up. That was like an event. Yeah. Or like we had to make choices in order to boost our social thing. You know yeah, what I mean? Social, like a a social link. <laughs> Very true. Another one for me is that the 2010s were like the first decade where I really like formally learned about speed running. Like I remember very vividly the first time I ever saw a GDQ and like really ever saw a speed run. Like before then I might have seen a video here and there of a speed run, but like I didn't process it as a speed run in the way that I know it in the modern context. I was like at home sick from work one day. It was when actually Nick, when you and I lived at the townhouse together. And I was laying on the couch in the living room and I turned on Twitch, probably to watch StarCraft. And I remember being like, Why why is Super Mario 64 have so many people watching it? Like, what's going on? And it was a G- it just so happened to be a GDQ at the time. It was like GDQ 2012, I think. And, yeah, it was, I think, Siglemic playing Super Mario 64. And I, I very, like, vividly recall the feeling of watching him play and be like, he is moving so fast and so differently from how I play the game that, like, like, my brain can't even, like, process this as the same game that I'm used to. Like, now I could I can watch it and I can, like, see what they're doing because I'm a little more familiar with the tricks and stuff. But when you're, like, an absolute newbie, it just seems like it's, like, an entirely different language. And I remember being very, very enchanted by that. And I, like, obsessively watched the rest. And it has since become a tradition to every GDQ is always on at my house all week when they're running. I just leave a TV with it going. I ended up learning to speed run a few games i was speed running super meat boy for a long time and i got decently good at that a couple other ones too things like anti-chamber and yeah i liked anti-chamber it was a good game it was fun and it was a fun speed run because it was like five minutes long so you could like do as many as you wanted but yeah now when i play a game like any game really there's sort of always this thought in the very back of my mind like i wonder if this game would be fun to speed run mm-hmm. And that's all 
that all came about this decade as a result of discovering GDQ. It's weird that that behavior was instilled in you, that 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 always thinking every time you play a game, like, oh, I wonder if this would be a good speedrun. Like, it's so weird that that just happened because you were sick and you saw yeah. that. All because I was sick one day and, like, your tra- the trajectory of your life shoots off in some specific direction. Like, it didn't, like, fundamentally change me as a person, but, like, it has had significant impact on a lot. Like, I've attended a GDQ. I have encouraged other people to be able to watch. I attended a speedrunning marathon that you were in. Ooh. Not to cop a memory that you might have. That's a good memory. But yeah, I. that seems like one of the more defining things about this decade is like, I learned a new way to approach games. I'm nodding my head. You can't, you can't hear it, <laughs> so I'm making sure you know. I agree, yes. Watching speedruns of like, Fire Emblem is always really weird to me too. Yeah, because they de- they like if you move the cursor, this exact like do, 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 they just like do really weird menu commands and stuff to manipulate the the RNG to just crit everything. Yep, and only kill like two enemies on the entire map, and they just beat the map. And remember, though, those were the weirdest ones for me to watch. Fire Emblem ones, yeah. In a similar vein, I think Final Fan the old the first oh, Final yeah, Fantasy Final is a Fantasy really interesting ones. one because yeah. it's tied to like the tile sets that they move on. Yeah, and so literally like the exact spot to stand from the beginning of the game to the very end is mapped out. Yeah, and if they ever devi- if they accidentally move one tile too far in one direction, they it have to like everything. compensate. Otherwise, the entire like game is completely thrown off. It's yeah, it's very interesting. <laughs> I like speed running. Yeah. I will say I never have that thought because all the games I play are <laughs> JRPGs. Hey, you can. There's a I mean, JRPG I, I, speedrunning marathon. I know there is. I've watched it. I know you do. <laughs> and it that doesn't mean they're fun to speedrun. <laughs> I remember because you guys, uh, when you went to college, you guys were in the game design course. We don't need to talk about that. But I remember, <laughs> like, you guys had the mindset um, that seems like it's kind of died out now. But. Um, after learning about like how some games were made or like some like graphics and stuff, I remember you guys being like extra critical about details that you like definitely would not have noticed had yeah. you not like had a little understanding about mm-hmm. the process in which they were made. So that that kind of reminds me of that. Every now and again, that will like sneak in where I'll be like, "There's just an untextured polygon here. What the, what's going on?" So he yeah. needs to unwrap that and texture it. <laughs> But yes, like it, it, it changes your mindset. You like see things with a different eye. Which I mean that can happen when you speedrun a game too, is like you can't you might not be able to necessarily see it for the original game that it was. You see it instead as like a toolbox for speedrunning it, but yeah. What else you guys like about the last decade? Um I'm not sure. I don't know anything about the last decade. The only the only other thing that I have like for me as a as a a gamer is I this last decade is when I like sort of crystallized how I like collect and play games. Like getting a house where I could build a game room as I've always wanted it and and like sort of simultaneously discovering like communities of people that were like focused around like recommending weird games and like games you might not have ever heard of and stuff like that like i my whole life i've basically always just like been buying games constantly like i've always had a big wall of a shelf of games in my room even when i was in high school and college but it was a little less focused than like i used to buy a bunch of bad games too just to play bad games and now it's like i have a pretty decent library of games but it is it's they're not just like a, a volume game. It's a yeah. it's it's a library of games that are actually interesting to me, even if they're kind of like weird and off the beaten path. And that all came about this decade, the early part of this decade, and the seeds were planted. But I think that it was in this decade. Earlier this decade, I joined the backloggery, and I yes. updated my backloggery today. <laughs> that's to say awesome. That I'm playing Apex Legends. Wow. Well, that's true. <laughs> yeah, this is super true. I uh, yeah, I was thinking how I'd only been on the backloggery for like a year and change at the start of this decade. I think I joined 2012. I came across 
an old folder. I, or no, not a folder. I finally, after many, many years, dug out the old username and password for my photo bucket account. Oh, man. And I got in there, and it was mostly backloggery banners. <laughs> and so I have a folder of now all the banners I ever had on backloggery. Was Because I did that not too long ago, the photo bucket thing. And when I went on that site, was was bad wow like it was really slow and buggy and like ads everywhere and like super unintuitive and you felt like your computer may have gotten a few infections it feels like the site has a virus yes it feels like the site has been infected with malware and adware like it is insane to me what happened to that site like it there's definitely just like one guy who still owns the domain who's just like milking it for whatever ad revenue he gets from people remembering it and trying to download their photos one last time it is a gross web. It is the Roblox of websites. <laughs> I suppose one big thing for me this decade is I started going to PAX West. True. And that's been uh, it's been fun. I made it a yearly thing up until this last year because you know or this year because of the whole house thing. Yeah, and you get yeah. to like you get to like go and like see your like wild wow buddies there, right? Yeah, which is mm-hmm. cool. Yeah, there's more more of a reason than just to go to PAX. It's to hang out with these people that I've spent many, many, many years of my life doing things with. It's cool you have a place to, to do that. Yeah, and it, it didn't start that way. It started off as me and Dave. We just said, we're going to go to PAX. And then uh, I don't remember I don't remember if Tyler went with us the first year. No, he didn't because it was just me and Dave. And then two of my wow, or yeah, a wow buddy and his friend showed up out there the first year. Uh, and then the second year was when Tyler came with, I mm-hmm. think. And then Pat. Did Pat go with that year? I don't, I don't remember who went with that year. Mm-hmm. Um, Jake did. And then uh, I, uh, then the year after that is when the WoW people started showing up. Okay. And then everybody, it's usually just been me and Dave and then whoever the else wants to come with us. To make the room cheaper. It always changes, like, who, who goes with. I'd love to go to a PAX someday. I I almost feel like I've missed the boat on PAX. Like, if you are if you don't have a tradition of going to PAX, that your first PAX being in 2020 or whatever is, like... Yeah, I don't know. It's, it's already... It's played out, man. <laughs> but I don't know if, that, I don't if there's know. Any, any basis to found that opinion on. Yeah, I, don't, I think you're just making that up. Okay. All right. Maybe you should go. One. It's fun. I'll buy your tickets for you. You have to pay me back, but I'll buy your tickets for you. What a what a very <laughs> minor convenience you're offering me. It Thank takes you. the hassle out of having to sit in line. True. Or sit in the online queue. True. But uh, it's a blast. I mean, just Seattle, the city too, is is great. Yeah. I and mean, when I when I got laid off from Thompson, I almost moved out there. Wow. I, it was on the forefront of my thinking. I for didn't a know while. that actually. Yeah, I would have cried every day. <laughs> I still will cry every day. Uh, but at, at the end, of, I didn't. At the end, and it's worked out. Well, it'd be really expensive out there, yeah. <laughs> right? Well, well, the idea is it, it would have been, it been cheaper, and now his house would be worth a lot. So yeah, the the not cheap, but cheaper. The jobs pay more though, so it balances out. Mm. And it's also <laughs> like a big text like hub, right? Yeah. So. It would have wouldn't have been too hard to apply my knowledge to get a job out there. Mm-hmm. True, you could have done the uh, Fraser tours. <laughs> yeah, the Fraser tours. Yeah. Um. Yes, yeah, so that was a big one, and then like going out to Milwaukee is yeah. now a tradition. Yeah, tradition of going to Midwest Gaming Classic for the last three, four years. We've four done four years, now? I think. Four, cause... yeah. We we went us plus Dave and Tyler, right? The first two years, I think. Yeah. And then the third year is when you started going to your friend's place, right? Yeah. It's just so much easier for me to do it that way. Yeah. And then me and Dave still drive out there with whoever we happen to rope into going with us. Yeah. Sometime, probably never Tyler again. Yeah. <laughs> um, Got that old ball and chain now. Yeah, and well, and he's just selling all his games. Former co-host of the video. Mm-hmm. 
But shout out to Tyler, the grumpy one. <laughs> <laughs> I thank him every day. He opened a spot for you. Did. Tyler's good people. And then sometimes Rod, like Roger, yeah, will go with and that. He probably won't anymore either now that he's got a kid on the way. Reasonable. So, I'm pretty sure Dave will just keep going though. I don't see any reason for Dave to not go, but. I assume you're going next year. Probably, although if I'm the only, if I'm by myself, I don't know if I want to do that drive by myself. Yeah, that would uh, impact my decision. <laughs> I usually don't buy the tickets until like two weeks before the event, anyway. So this is not like a steep discount or anything for buying it super early. No, and it's never going to sell out. So like, you can buy them at the door and it's fine. So, well. Based on last year, I'm glad I didn't buy them. Have, wait to buy them at the door because the line was really long. Oh, okay. Because uh, Roger and Tyler did not, and they had to wait like 20, 30 minutes to get their tickets. Mm. I want to get into that vendor floor. Right. Start shopping. I'm really glad they moved. It's much yes, nicer than the much tent. nicer location than it was. That that the, tent was the, brutal. The tent, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oof. I we played Dota two this to decade. <laughs> What? We played Dota 2 this decade. Yeah. I yeah. played Dota 1, not this decade. Dude, you and Ice Frog hanging out. Yeah. I played League of Legends this decade. I feel sorry. Like that. It came out. I mean, I had a good time with it. Hmm. I don't play it anymore, but I put a fair number of hours and I had a good time. It's funny that this decade has contained the rise and fall, uh, not fall, but like the rise and level off, I guess, of MOBAs yeah, and the rise and level off of Battle Royales. We're probably still like in a little bit of the rise of the Battle Royale, but like yeah, they haven't it's, crashed it's, yet. if it's not at its peak, it feels like it's about to peak. Like yeah. it, it can't get much bigger. So well, people don't really talk about Fortnite or player on anymore. That's true. Like a, a little bit, but like, I think I'm skewed being friends with Noah. So like apex is never far from not on topic. my mind yeah but yeah dota 2 is that that was probably right after starcraft 2 right or maybe yeah. even some overlap with starcraft 2 i don't quite recall but it was i don't either it was another game that swept through a good chunk of the friends group and we were playing it pretty often i i think Pat i had like six seven hundred hours still yeah oof he was talking to me about it the other day because there's like a big patch that went through and like rebalanced a lot. Like it just changed the game completely. Yeah, I heard like wards are free. Yeah, they man. added like 40 new items. There's no the secret jung- shop there's anymore. Jungle items. Yeah, everyone gets a career. Yeah, yeah, everyone it's, gets it's a career. It's just entirely different. But yeah, I I definitely like I get the itch every now and again to go play back and play StarCraft two. I do not get the itch to go back right. and play Dota. I I am so happy for that to just have been a point in my life yeah i mean i never got back into dota 2 like i was kind of hyped for it when it came out but then i'm like i don't really want to play this yeah uh, i had i played dota 1 a lot with my friend and dota 2 transition wasn't difficult for me it was mm-hmm. weird because everyone had different names <laughs> yeah um but uh like i it just didn't like at the time, I had been entrenched in League because a lot of my friends had transitioned to League since so it was just easier to, like, queue a game up than go into the Warcraft client and, like, make a room and invite, you know, wait for people to join you and shit like that. Um, and League, you just hop on and join the party or whatever, right? And then League is just mechanically so different yeah. than Dota that I got rusty at Dota because everything was slow and turn speed and all the weird weird nuances of dota um the completely different like lane meta that exists in that game versus the the very very concrete league meta that's been that way forever Hmm. of top jungle mid to bottom that's just always been like that and then that, or that's how the game evolved, I should say. Mm. And then now Dota had uh, Dota's got like a three man lane and two one man lanes and an off lane and this <laughs> that and the other thing and it it was all lost on me. So I I don't, whenever I played Dota one, it was two one two. That's how all the time. Mm. So the new meta is 
bizarre. Yeah. I never really got used to it, and it was hard to do that in, like, pug pug games. Because hmm. they would rage, as they always did. Like, that was just part of Dota. But it was just not something I got into, I guess, because nobody was playing it. And then Pat's like, you should play with me. And I'm like, okay. And then he never is on when I wanted to play, so it didn't help. I played Chrono Cross this decade. I mean, so did I. And beat it. I mean, that's just you being behind the times. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. There's definitely, because of all the WoW playing that I did, I missed out on a lot of games that I've had backlogged and have to go back and replay or, you know, stuff that I missed that I had to go back and play. Mm. Like, I, I've got a pile of PS1 games to play. Well, part of that is because of MGC. Yeah. And there's just so many good games on the PS1. Yeah. That too. I discovered Persona this decade. I also did that. I feel like that is true for I mean, when did a Persona lot of 3... society yeah. at large. I don't remember when 4 came out. I played three PSP. Same. It was my first one. Four was the no three was my first one. P3P. I played Fez. You played Fez. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You did. You played at that apartment, I think. Right. Uh, the one that had, I had in St. Paul. Yes. Yeah, I think so. And I haven't played five. Well, I mean. Don't play it yet, because for Royale's coming out in a couple months. Oh, yeah. I was just saying, like, I know there's a little drama with 5, but when Royale comes out, it's a brand new game. I'll be playing it again. Uh, I, think I, the, I think I will, too. The intention is that I will play it and Leah will watch. At this point, she'd rather watch it knit. So. That's right, because uh, she wanted to play it, right? Well. Or she was supposed to play it before you. I think she but, was playing it. Are you aware, are you aware of the story? Was... No. No, I don't know. If so I she heard. was playing it. Okay. She was 25 hours in or something like that. I don't remember exactly. Uh, and then we got a PS4 Pro, mm-hmm. and I copied over all of our saves and all of our data or whatever. Yeah, through the cloud. Pulled them whatever. down through the cloud, through the PS Plus. But her save didn't come over because she was playing on her account, which oh. is not PS Plus. And in my brain, I like didn't think, I, like I didn't think about the fact that game saves not tied to my account wouldn't yeah. come over. I was just like, oh, I'm just cloud syncing everything, and it'll all yeah. come down. So I traded in our old PS4 to get a Pro. Yeah. And her data just Oops. went with it. So it's just rip. Sorry about your 25 hours of Persona. It that sounds like a lot, but it's not. Yeah, I mean, the well, game it is, both is. It's a quarter. It is and isn't. It's a quarter of the game. It is. It was. Not a quarter of the game for me. <laughs> no, I beat the game in about 100 hours. You, but I'm also a monster. You're a monster with JRPGs. I, you are very <laughs> impressive to me. <laughs> like, I wish I had your efficiency and speed. <laughs> so it comes from playing too many of them. Because I think I it took me like between 150 and 200. I think. Wow. Oh, wow. But I don't even know what I would do for that extra like. I mean, time. I agree that Dan's a beast. You're also a little distractible. So. <laughs> I like to run around and click on all the corners. And every now and again, let it run for 30 minutes while you poke around on the internet and then go back right. to playing. So That's fair. Yeah. So when it comes out, we'll restart and uh, she and I can argue over who our wife <laughs> will be. Bless you. Oh. No, any other close. memories you're thinking of? God, sort of. Sora. So he tell you what I have. Do you have one? I have a big memory. A whopper. I gave this game a five stars on Backloggery, and I don't know why. It's not even on here. Yeah. Uh, we beat that game in this decade. We beat that game. <laughs> we beat Final Fantasy Crystal Chronicles this decade. Oh. In its ideal conditions. Yeah. Like with the Game Boys and everything. Yeah, yep. with four people with Game Boys plugged in as. I did that. As Nintendo, as Miyamoto intended. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you did that? You beat that? Yeah. All right. God. No, no, I never beat it. We got to the yeah. final zone. Because no, no one did. That's what did. happens. I, I got to the final zone with my buddies, and then 
I think that's when college started, so we went boop, yeah. and then we lost it. So I was like, oh, that sucks. It is impressive to get through. God, just going through backloggery. I played Jet Set yeah, Radio happened this in decade? this decade. Mac and Cheetos. Mac and Cheetos. Mac and Cheetos did happen huh. this decade. <laughs> Jesus Christ. That, that is relevant on a gaming podcast. <laughs> Mac and Cheetos are a gaming food. I don't know how their calendar goes, but they might be back soon because I did see that the, the Cheesy Tots were back. Oh, man. Oh, yeah. So maybe I thought they've been back next. for a while, haven't they? Maybe. I, I just went I don't, through a draft review. I'll just tweet Burger attention. King. We'll figure it out. Yeah. Mac and Cheetos, famous for being the title of a previous episode of the Bay. Yeah. <laughs> it's going to get tagged in this one, too. <laughs> Uh, what about any like single player games that you know? Because a lot of these things have been like multiplayer experiences. Those but are for, usually the more memorable ones. They are, but like certain <laughs> series, like I had one that kind of started in two thousand nine, but progressed or went through. Zero Blade Chronicles happened. Oh yeah, I did think of that. I was gonna say Dragon Age. Oh, Dragon Age, that, Dragon and that's Age. a big one for you. That left a big impression on me personally. If I was gonna define you by the games you like if i was to build your top 10 based on like volume and level of passion that you seem to have for the games outside of like the the games that you and i shared from a shared childhood dragon age and kerbal space program would be the two oh, I love <laughs> those are the defining those are the games. Nick games they are i mean there's a lot of series so like for example this generation or this decade we started it in the 3ds and the vita weren't even out mm-hmm. like the 3ds came out in 2011 i, I think, think. So, yeah wait i have it i have it listed here 3ds came out march 27th 2011 and the vita came out february 22nd 2012 yeah so like i never picked up either of those on launch i had a vita on i did not have a vita on launch i bought ps4 golden <laughs> Mm-hmm. Uh, or P4 Golden before I had a Vita and then I went out and bought a Vita like two months later I did something similar I had I went and bought for the PSP mm-hmm. the Disgaea oh, yeah. port and it took me five years to get a PSP <laughs> I had a PSP fairly early on in its life although I think it was still a PSP 3000 so maybe it wasn't as early as I think but uh, I have a small library for that, like a couple of PSP exclusive games, some RPGs, like Val, uh, Valkyrie Chronicle, Valkyria Chronicles Two, um, that I never finished. A couple of the Trails in the Sky games, maybe. I don't have those. I didn't even discover those games until Cold Steel. Mm. Like I knew about Trails in the Sky, but I have it on Steam. I don't think I ever bought the PSP copy of it because. From everything I understand, the PSP copy runs kind of like crap. Mm. So you're better off just running Steam, and I have a Steam link, so just run it on the TV. I did buy the other ones, the second and third chapter, this last uh, Steam sale. Nice. Nice. So those will be my next major... Major games. Yeah, probably. I think uh, the Vita... So the Vita is like one of my favorite system yeah it was great time. i love the Vita. I, I loved it um and i actually really love the 3ds too i i feel like i'm one of the few people that genuinely still enjoys the 3d especially after they released the model where it, it eye tracks oh yeah but i think because of those systems and like playing my ds so much is when like i've sort of over the course of this decade started to prefer handhelds when i can get them the switch really helps with that too because now console games are handheld mm-hmm. too but like it was a great decade for handheld people yeah, I mean, I I didn't have a Game Boy growing up. I got a Game Boy Advance eventually, and I played a lot of that because of Fire Emblem and uh, other games. Yeah. So handheld has always been, and Pokemon, of course. This has been pretty big for me. But lately it's fallen off because, it, you know, there's nothing for them anymore. But the, I think the last game I played on, on my 3DS was... Uh, Radiant Historia remake. Great game. Did Radiant Historia come out this decade? One of, that's one of the, the best remake, RPGs. It, for sure. It came out True. Like last year. So good. Oh. But the the original one def, I don't I don't think so cuz it was on original DS. So, unless it was like the last year of its life. So like 
a big game for me that came out this decade. I, I didn't actually realize it came out this decade. It's right on the border. It's October 2010. Super Meat Boy came out this decade. Was it that long ago? Holy crap. Yeah. That that was a huge game for me. Dude, uh, Meat Boy Forever is coming out soon. Is it? Yeah, it's coming out soon. Soon, TM. Yeah. It was it's almost to, here. It was going to come out in um, April. I mean, take as long as you need, but like, I had strong hopes that it would be out this year. But, I mean, we'd probably get punched by all the fans out there for not mentioning that this is also the decade where Dark Souls came out mm-hmm. and Souls games in general became Souls a games. dominant force. Yep. I think if you're going to make a most... Yeah, Nick, I don't know if I like that reaction. Uh, if you're going to make a most influential game of the decade, I feel like you would have to either... It would Demon either be, it would either be Demon's Souls or Dark Souls. Yeah. Or I guess you could make a case for PUBG, depending on if, you, yeah. if what you think is a bigger deal. But I think Dark Souls is probably the most influential game that came out. Like, every game has... In the same way that every game started having experience and like meters to fill, every game is like doing a little bit of the Souls thing now. Yeah. Even the latest Star Wars games is like a little bit of Souls game. It is basically a Souls game, is it mm-hmm. not? It, it's, my understanding is that like it's a little bit of Souls and a little bit of Metroid. I mean, it's third person. I guess like not. It's over the shoulder kind of like Dark Souls. Yeah. Third person. I've watched a little bit of it streamed. I haven't. I'm interested in getting it, but not probably until it's on sale for a decent amount. That makes or sense. I could probably, you know what? I have Best Buy gift cards just rotting in the other room. I could probably go buy it with that. Do it. Because I don't know what else to spend them on. <laughs> I'm like, I bought a vacuum cleaner. I'm like, what else do I spend these gift cards on? Games. Right. But I buy all my games on Amazon. I have yet to. I have. Got, I haven't gone to a box store in forever. You need a blender. A blender. <laughs> I, uh, I mean, I don't have one, but I don't think I need one right now. Can I make some marts? <laughs> hey, the Vitamix changed my life. <laughs> when I this decade, when I when my washer died <laughs> and I had to go buy appliances, I went to Best Buy and I was like. They sell a lot more appliances than I thought they did. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> oh, but I, I just I do. don't trust. I don't. I, yeah, I like do this all my shopping on Amazon too. It's just it's easier. Oh. But like Best Buy usually seems kind of overpriced on stuff. And it's hard to do that with games. I mean, the games are always like. I took a gamble and I bought my TV on Amazon. Sale price. I used to go to the box stores for but to buy a TV like yeah. that. But no, I I bought off Amazon. It was fine. Came came good, no damage. VR happened this decade. Yep, that's, that's another true. huge one. Now that I don't have gla- my glasses went away this decade. Yeah, true. Two I, I, it makes I want to get context specifically so that I can. <laughs> but just do the just laser. I don't just get over want it. to. I don't dislike glasses at all. I'm just saying, if you're gonna bother with contacts, you should just get rid of glasses completely. Getting contacts would be exclusively for VR. I would have a set of VR contacts and I would have glasses <laughs> the rest of my life. It's only because it's annoying to fit your glasses into a VR headset. Yeah. You but, just got to cut the little notch on the foam for your glasses. Even then, like, the lens of it touching the lens of the glasses. Oh, yeah, I suppose. Like, it sucks cleaning them every time. It's interesting that VR... Everyone thought VR is going to be the future, and I still think that, like, VR has a lot... Of it positive momentum, yeah. But instead of it like coming out and ch- like completely changing the landscape, it sort of like came out and everyone was just like surprisingly like yeah, VR came out. I I really love it, but I feel like I the public very, consensus in general is like and maybe even you, yeah. I was very indifferent. They're just like yeah, huh, VR, and I'm like you can stand in Skyrim, you can look around. I mean, I'll be honest, watching Noah play a game in vr was just made me frustrated just because of the controls yeah why he's like he turn his head like this and go resident evil 7 is a bad like (laughs) vr game that's not true that's not true but like it is (laughs) awkward to control and it does feel weird yeah in general i mean there are tons of other games like like tetris looked like it would be fun tetris Tetris is amazing tetris is good that was really really cool 
I haven't played it. I haven't played any VR game. You should play. Uh, there's like five must plays. I feel like in VR. And Tetris, there's the fact. Tetris, Beat Saber, Beat Saber. yeah, Astrobot, um, uh, the Super Hot, Super High, and I would say Job Simulator, but I know others would not. I would as your first. It's VR a good game. As your first of those. VR. Perfect. Yes. Isn't there a From game? Coming out in VR. So uh, they released a game called Durasane. It? Okay. It's good, but it's not like a must play. No, it's it's weird. You... It's like a walking simulator. Right. A little bit of like time based puzzles, but it's good. But I mean, there's so many games to list, and you know, there's not enough time to list all of them. Like, yeah. I'm just scrolling through the games that I like top ranked, like Catherine, Heavy Rain, mm-hmm. Near. Valkyria yeah. Chronicles. I don't know if Valkyria, Valkyria Chronicles, Chronicles came out this decade. Three does Crash that. Course. Maybe I'll dig that Three out and finish that course. this week. I was on like one of the last missions and I just kind of like forgot about it. I gotta get four. I'm like yeah, embarrassed. I'm talking about four. Oh, you yeah. are? Yeah, yeah, I've never... It was really good all the way through what I played. Um, I, I loved one. I yeah, was a little. Was I was disappointed in two, yeah. uh, and then three never came the cons- out here. Right? right. Yeah. The consensus is one is amazing. The general consensus: one is amazing. Two is pretty lackluster. Yeah. Three was a lot better, but we never got it. Okay. Probably because two didn't sell very well. Yeah. And then four is right up there with one. Oh, for that's me. so good. It makes me want to play it so bad. I think it. Maybe I'll get it for Christmas. Steve. Yeah. Do you know when I joined the backlog? Already? Uh. I think no one knows. He's looking at it. Right February 8th, 2010. 12 13, 2009. 12, well, almost exactly. Almost, yeah. Almost a perfect capture. I really wish that the history on Backloggery went all the way back. Yeah. To, to the start. Yep. Like, I'm legitimately tempted to start my own duplicate, like, Google Sheet for this stuff because I'd like to have history that goes back. Like, 10 years from now, I will want to know. Like, what is the exact order I bought every one of my PS5 games in? And have, I can't have you tried that. contacting them about that? No, I bet I could reach out to them, and they probably would be able to, like, in a pinch, give it to me. Yeah, but unless I had like a, a real compelling case for it, like if I was like, I'm working on the, this project that this would be immensely helpful for, then maybe. But a podcast, even that'd be an easy lie. Yeah, but that's like a half truth. I mean, Hopefully, would, Drummond I mean, doesn't I, listen. I really doubt it would be that hard for them to open up a database and pull that stuff out. Well, and it's it if they track it, what guess. they track. Yeah. Like if there's like timestamps on it, then that'd probably be easy. Yeah, like for when them. this row was created or whatever. Yeah. I have extreme respect for Drummond because he operates the site like technically, basically by himself. And he has, uh, I don't know if it's arthritis or inflammation or tendonitis or something but he has something where he has pain if he types very much so he does all the like coding and back-end work largely through voice commands mm. and like is currently transitioning backloggery to like an entirely new uh like platform and completely redesigning the site basically through his voice which is like yeah on you because I, I remember reading something that was kind of an interesting history of the site because it like started off as like spreadsheets kind of yeah it was literally like a and google then, sheet yeah. yeah and then he updated it to be running like on a database with like a php front end like an actual website with yep. web technology <laughs> <laughs> so I, i'm guessing he's just updating it for new modern technology i forget what what i think that he's he he wanted to like update the site to get rid of a lot of the like mistakes he made making his first website, and as part of that, he's switching his like whatever the platform that it runs on to Amazon or something like that. Oh yeah, so he's running on like public cloud. Yeah. Instead of like a potentially no name like. Yep. Whatever. Web host. <laughs> yep. <sighs> it's been a good decade. Got anything else? I have a lot of fun looking back on the last 10 years. <laughs> the next 10 years will be interesting. I am interested to, see, interested to see where VR goes. Yeah. And the other thing that's just starting that could flop service? is streaming services. I 
am very pessimistic about that. It's true, but if you look at every other like sector of entertainment, yeah, I mean, like, I can understand they have that. Risen and but I, I feel like the gamers are a little more picky about that kind of stuff. It's also yeah, but it's a lot much harder. harder to stream a game once right. once you can get the infrastructure down and you can get the casuals yeah, using it. You can hook. If then they don't have a casual, choice. Yeah. It has the challenge of being the only streaming service that has to have bi-directional sync, right? Like, yeah. You can just stream a song or stream a video and it One just is received yeah. on an endpoint. But with games, you have to send that information, then take information and send that back and make sure that those two things are in sync. Yeah, like a video, you're just going to annoy people. There's no real consequence yeah. if it stutters. Yeah. <laughs> or isn't a game, like, it'll make people really mad. Yeah. Uh, but there's multiple services popping up now too. So to, like, as long as there's competition and like, I don't know. Yeah, we'll yeah. see. Yeah, I, I, I would like to see where it goes. I'm not afraid of like a streaming or a digital future because there will always, even though I prefer physical games, there will always be boutique, like limited run game style companies that are releasing physical print runs of certain games. And even if today, another there was never another physical game that came out. I have more than enough games that have come out between the mid eighties and now to buy that I will never run out of them. So. Yeah. And you can kinda I would almost be like, now you can focus. You have a you have a finite set. I mean of there's still new games do. coming out, remember. Yeah. They're yeah. just you just gotta stream them. So true. But VR two, you're right. I'm I'm excited for VR to I think VR started like right when the tech could barely do mm-hmm. it. And VR five, six years from now, that is wireless and like in a much smaller, more compact form. Just a pair and of like, glasses or something. And, 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 and higher fidelity, resolution. like much better resolution. And and some of the problems have been solved around motion sickness and stuff like that as much as they can be. Like, it, it feels like we're in like the Atari of yeah, VR. Sure. And I'm excited to get to the Super Nintendo of VR. Oh god, the Super Nintendo of <laughs> VR. <laughs> the high bar. It is. I want a turn-based RPG in VR. <laughs> Where I point at the guy, it teleports me up to him, and I swing my sword or I cast my spell. That's what I want. I think the one other thing I'd really yeah, like in the You just want to get sword art online. You just want to get in there. <laughs> I don't... You just want to live the game. I kind of do want to live the game. But I don't want <laughs> like awesome. sword art online. <laughs> What'd you call me? I said it'd be awesome. And turn-based would actually work kind of well, yeah, because of the, with the movement issues. Yep. Let's do it. So I think it would be good. Or like um. Like an Etrian Odyssey. Like a strategy RPG. Like a VR Final Fantasy Tactics. I think that would oh. be cool. Where you get to like walk around and like. Yeah, <laughs> there you go. Walk Jump to up your on square. a roof. <laughs> you actually pick up a rock and throw it. <laughs> That'd be cool. So good. You actually have to yell in order ah, to build up your chakras. Scream copter. That's the VR I want to live in. <laughs> um, it'll be interesting ten years from now to look back. Like right now, it kind of feels like handhelds. For example, like Nintendo has merged their console and handhelds, and like PlayStation or Sony has said that they don't want to do another handheld. So it's sort of like handhelds are kind of going away yeah and what if that sense. changes and in 10 years from now we're all talking about how like microsoft released a handheld that dominated yeah because nobody else was making handhelds so yeah they, they so that just took the handheld market yeah that'd be awesome god i can't wait to listen to this podcast 10 years from now and be like oh my god steve you were right <laughs> <laughs> the streaming thing might have a huge effect on handhelds because if it were ends up working out and every phone and tablet becomes like a decent viable handheld. True. Yeah. Because I think there's always if gonna anything be a that would be them. a reason not to make handhelds anymore. Like that's in the there's no reason for a handheld because your phone is the the console. That's you, the reason. that's I what you say now. Them. Yeah. Yeah. You just buy those little uh, controller frames that plug into your phone. I will never not be. I will never not have love for the dedicated handheld. Something about a machine that's specifically designed just to play your games. Yeah, all cartridges. 
Or just little SD cards. That's fine. Just yeah, some, so some little, little printed little label with a picture and a UMDs. name of the game. Can we get UMDs again? Ooh. Yes, please. That, oh. I went back and I played God of War Chains of Olympus on your this PSP? year on my PSP, I think. Oof. And that nice I, grind, grinding noise. I got so nostalgic about that sound <laughs> playing it and going <laughs> like ugh, took me back. I yeah. was so happy. The I want to bottle that feeling. Being in my bed with the light off and just playing my PSP, waiting, for, waiting to go to bed. <sighs> playing DJ Max. Good time. <sighs> I think we're done. Yeah. Looking forward to the next ten years. Hard to make any predictions. I don't know what I want. I want good games. Yeah, I want good VR. I think is what I mostly want. Yeah, we're on the cusp of a new console generation as well. So yeah, true. Be. In ten years from now, we might be again. Actually, yeah. ten years from now, we'll probably, based on previous console gens, be done with the one that's about to come out, and like a few years into the next one. Yeah, I was we'll, we'll say, be we'll be playing PS six and looking back, on like PS five nostalgically. Like we'll think of the PS four the way that right now we think of the PS two. Yeah. What? Retro gaming. The PS4. <laughs> oh, oh, no. Remember <laughs> remember when VR sets had to go on your head? Oh, my God. <laughs> I was there. Now you just put the thing on the side of your head, and it just projects it. Uh, it's right into your eyeballs. Mm-hmm. So, November, not November, December 22nd. Second? This will probably, the next, the next one will probably go up on the 23rd, like a Monday. Um, we'll Action. be doing. We'll, we'll deal with the scheduling off air, but we'll. F- I'm out of town that weekend, so we're, we're, we're gonna, gonna figure, figure it out. out. Um, Somewhere around Christmas. So in the next one, the next show, we're gonna do top ten games of this year. Yeah, top ten games of 2019. Okay, and we'll throw in a couple of bonus categories, I think, too. Yeah. Just so it's it so. So games can get the love they need. Mm-hmm. Some of them, yeah. Because uh, some of them, I would put on every category, and it's not fair. Yeah. So it'd be cool to put a one in each or something, you know. Uh, and then after that, in 2020, we are going to be doing the games of the decade top ten. You think? I don't know what it'll be. I don't know if it'll be top 10 or we each bring a certain amount or maybe to make a little more room, we do like a top 25 or something. I don't know exactly what that'll be structured like, but a conversation similar to the one we had today, but a little more focused around specific games. Yeah. Instead of just saying the game came out, we would talk about the game. A little more time to go a little deeper on some of them. Mm -hmm. So any more words, Nick, before we send off these nerds? I think I'm good. Steve, did you check the email thing? Did we look at emails like professionals? None this week. Okay. I got a text from Courtney saying she listened to one of the most recent uh, podcasts and said that we do have the video at gmail.com. She's the one who made it. (laughs) Uh, So. Thanks. Yeah, I'll check that one out later and maybe if there are actually emails. I'll edit them in or something. Or we can talk about them next time. Uh, Dan, do you have any goodbyes? Anything to say? No. No? Looking forward to next time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Steve, what do you got? Anything? Goodbyes? Thanks for stopping by. Looking forward to Game of the Year talk. Yeah, man. Goodbye. Video.